Alright, so we're going to start putting these monosaccharides together, make polysaccharides, and what connects them, the type of bond that puts them together, what do we get at the end, are glycosidic linkages. So these result from condensation reactions. These are, these are the bonds that make the large molecule from the pieces. Uh, so you've, you've seen these types of bonds before, and in the case of sugars, we have a special name for them. So it's not anything new, it's just a scary new name for something you've pretty much seen before. But to be clear, what are we talking about here? Well, um, these are the bonds that... Um, hold together a polysaccharide or multiple sugars. So multiple sugars. That's what we're talking about here. So before we're talking about one sugar, now we're going to talk about two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. Actually, in this video, I'm going to keep it simple. We're only going to talk about two. I'll make another video where I talk about the big macromolecule lots of glycosidic linkages, the heavy-duty stuff like starches and cellulose, things like that. Our own energy storage in our bodies. All right, so uh, here's an example. We'll just kick it off. We'll just get right into this. We can have two alpha glucose that will link up to form so we've got two monosaccharides that are going to link up to form a polysaccharide named alpha maltose. Okay. And so we're going to draw a condensation reaction, but now we're going to do it with sugars. All right. And so they're going to be in their ring structures. All of these linkages will involve sugars in their ring structures. So I'm going to have two alpha glucoses. All right. And so I'm going to draw my two skeletons first. And it's going to be up, down, up, down. And I'll just fill with hydrogens. All right. Same deal here. I'm holding off on the one carbon because I have to think about that one. Always do the part you have to think about carefully and last if you can. And so if it's an alpha, what does that mean? I put my OH, it's going to be down. So we're going to go OH down, H up, and these are both alpha, so I draw the same thing twice. How's that for exciting? All right, and so what's going to happen is we're going to get a condensation reaction, so we're going to have an OH group, and I'm going to very carefully... Uh, how do I put this? Okay, so I'm just going to tell you which OH groups get used in this reaction. And we're going to go into more detail about that in a minute. So I'm going to have a water form here. This OH group and this OH group are going to be used in the condensation reaction. So it's going to be between my 1 carbon and my 4 carbon. My number 4 carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, number 1 carbon. Those are the ones that get used for this. Okay, so, draw my reaction arrow, I'm going to put it down here for space reasons. And so now what I have, is I have the same skeleton here. Okay. Let me be a little bit careful there. I'm going to have the same skeleton here. So i got to be careful. And they are going to connect... To the same oxygen, and then I'm going to have hydrogens that point up, and then otherwise it's the same. So CH2OH, so up, down, up, down, CH2OH up, and then this O would be down, and then up and down, and where does this one go? It goes here, because I just looked there to figure it out. So I'm basically just copying this over. The difference is now these carbon oxygen bonds go to the same oxygen. Same trick we've seen a million times. And I just fill in my hydrogens. And I get a water. Okay, so this is alpha 
maltose. And I alluded to this in the last video, but there are all kinds of locations. Why did I choose these two? Well, the answer is I have to use these two or I don't get maltose. I get a different sugar. So this linkage right here is what we call an alpha 1 4 linkage or glycosidic linkage. So maltose has this specific linkage. If I put together two different any, if I switch any of the other OH groups into this condensation reaction, I get a different sugar. I still get a sugar, I just get a different linkage. So I get a different disaccharide. So maltose is defined by having this linkage. So it is a glucose and a glucose with this linkage. Now, why is it alpha maltose? I look here. This could have been alpha or beta. So if I flip it, I get beta maltose. So if I had a beta glucose here, I'd get beta maltose. Now if I had a beta glucose here and used it, I'd get a beta 1,4 linkage and I'd get a different sugar. That's a different linkage. So why is this an alpha 1,4 linkage? Well, I have an, a 1 carbon and a 4 carbon. Hopefully that makes sense. So I have my 1 carbon connected to my 4 carbon. That's what we're showing here. And then the 4 carbon has to be OH down because it's glucose. But the one carbon is a wild card. It could be up or down. And so I have to tell you, is that alpha or beta? Because there is an alpha or beta version of the one carbon. Having glucose doesn't tell me which one it is. So that's what's happening here. All right. So let's, um, and then this is just named, you know, maltose because it is a glucose to glucose with a alpha one four linkage. Just by convention, we just named it. Could have just as easily named it alpha jeptose or something. Who knows? All right. So let's kind of put this into play a little bit. Let's kind of practice this here. So it's going to be that same idea. You're going to have to use two OH groups in the condensation reaction. The linkage is going to tell you what type, what, what OH is to use to put these together. So for example, so I gave you an example of a glycosidic linkage before. Now I'm going to give you an example of applying that knowledge. So let's talk about um, lactose. So lactose is formed from a beta-1,4 linkage. between, it's not going to be two glucoses this time, by the way. That name's going to give you a big hint about what at least one of the sugars are going to be. And it's going to be between galactose and glucose. And should you ever see a problem like this, understand that this and this are the same order as here. So whatever sugar I say first will be on the left. Whatever sugar I say second will be on the right. So that means our linkage is going to involve the number four carbon of glucose and the number one carbon of galactose. And it has to be beta galactose. I can't use alpha galactose. All right. So here's how we start out. Oops, there's an O there. Oh man, that is, that is a rough hexagon, let me tell you. All right, I think I saved the day. I think I bailed, bailed out of that one, all right. So this is gonna be my beta galactose that I draw here. And so what am I gonna react with? I'll draw beta glucose, why not? Why not use beta glucose? So I could use alpha or beta here, but I'll just write beta. Doesn't matter which one, because again, it's the four carbon. That's gonna be pointing down on glucose no matter what I do. If it's not, I drew, well, I drew galactose is what I drew. All right, so CH2OH, so we go down, or we go up and then down, but we have to go up here and then up again, and then down, tricky, tricky galactose. Okay. And it's beta, so the OH on the one carbon goes up. 
That's my beta galactose, beta glucose, same skeleton. They're both six carbon aldoses. And I go up, down, up, down, and it's beta, so up. And I come back to my hydrogens. It's nice that all things. That's very nice of nature, right? To do that for us, make it easy to remember. All right, and I've got a beta 1,4 linkage. So just, just for accounting reasons, I'm going to circle which um, hydroxyl or alcohol groups I'm going to use in this reaction. So there's one. There's my beta 1. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my 4. Okay, so I've got to connect these two. Draw my reaction arrow, and let's get to work here. So I've got six member ring. And let's see, it's gonna go up. There's a couple ways you can do this, I guess. I'm gonna draw the easy one that breaks all of nature, uh, but well, actually, you know what? I'll do it the good way. I'll do it the, the good way. Yeah. All right, so there's a, there's a trick here. I'm going to do that. That's how they connect. I'm just going to stack them. You can also do this trick where um, alternatively or you've got kind of like the ends of our rings up in our you can go like this. This is also a beta linkage. Either of those are fair game. We'll see more of this in uh, in the next video. When we start doing some really long chains. Alright, so this is my galactose, so CH2OH, HO, OH. O H, that's an H, H, filling all my hydrogens, looking good. I got an H there, CH2OH, H, up, down, up, that should be an OH, there we go. Whew, save the day. And it's a beta. All right, and so this is beta, because I've got a beta right here, lactose. It's defined by that linkage between these two sugars. So you can swap different monosaccharides into the system as well. So it doesn't always have to be a series of glucoses. So we can also have this. And there's a couple ways of drawing that linkage. There's the lazy chemist way if I want to keep things more just horizontal. Or I can actually sneak this above and, and then do this trick as well. Oh, and I get a water. Keep it balanced. Keep all my atoms accounted for. So, that's an example here. Now, I'm going to kick it to a practice problem. So, let's look at sucrose. So, this is table sugar. So, lactose is what's in milk. Um, some of us have the genetic mutation, the superpower, that we can just drink that as adults and not have any issues. Some people are... Somehow, it's not that that we've labeled people lactose tolerant when that's actually a genetic mutation. Like we're supposed to lose the ability to digest the lactose um, as we get older. So we need it for, you know, we need to be able to digest it when we're infants. And somehow, uh, and it came about in actually separate parts of the world at the same time. So the, any culture where you see cow's milk, this mutation became prevalent. So like in Northern Europe, it was a big deal because not a lot. I mean, there's only so much pickled fish you can eat before you start trying anything you can think of. And it turns out drinking cow's milk worked out pretty well for some people. That became a dominant feature in the gene pool because it's very advantageous and it carried throughout. Uh, India had it as well, and I think a few other areas um, in addition. But interestingly, if you can't digest lactose, you are called lactose intolerant, when really they're just normal humans. It's the genetic freaks that can, can handle lactose all the time. But no one calls them lactose tolerant. Well, what's, what's going on with that? And to be clear, if anyone's thinking that I'm having some sour grapes over here, 
I have the ability to digest lactose as an adult. Not a problem for me. I don't need to take, uh, you know, the lactate. Is that lactate? Whatever. Lact I don't. I think it's lactate is the name of the pill you can take um, to digest dairy. So you know, it's like you go to the store, you get a pint of ice cream, you get a big old bottle of lactate, or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so that was the last sugar. So now we're going to talk about table sugar, which is called sucrose. And so this is like, you know, what you use in baking or you put in tea or coffee or whatever. Uh, you put it on your, your cereal because there isn't enough sugar in your, your, uh, your lucky charms already. You've got to add some more. That's this stuff. Okay. So we have, uh, it's an alpha one, two, Beta, ooh, because remember, that can be, yeah, we'll see. Linkage, I'm all excited, I haven't explained why yet, but you're probably thinking the beta 2 seems weird, unless you realize that it's between glucose and fructose. All right. So. Take a minute, review your notes, remember what glucose and fructose look like. Take a shot at this. And does it matter if your glucose is alpha or beta? Does it matter if your fructose is alpha or beta? And what does alpha or beta fructose look like? So, I did show that. So remember, but interesting, right? It's the two carbon that decides whether it's alpha or beta because it's that five member ring. So yeah, pause the video, take a shot, and then, um, Maybe you succeed, maybe you meet terrific failure, just great, tremendous wave of failure. That's fine. We're going to go through it in a minute. Get a different marker that was dying on me. All right, so what does this look like? Well, I've got to draw alpha glucose, right? It's got to be in alpha. Fructose has got to be in the beta form. So I'm going to have that, and I'm going to have beta fructose. And maybe you figured out what to do, and your line got kind of squirrely. I, of course, am a trained professional. I'm going to do this in the best way possible. I'm going to draw my skeleton for my glucose. And it's alpha, so this is going to be an H up here. I'm going to put an O right there. You might see what I'm doing already. That's my skeleton. That's going to be my alpha. And this is going to be a CH2OH right here. So let's fill the whole thing out and then I'll label it. All right. So CH2OH, H up, down, up, down. As you can see, I do heavily rely on that trick. Down, up. All right, so nice that they alter me. Okay, so this is my one carbon. This is my two carbon. This is my one carbon up here. So my two would have an OH going up. So I'm just drawing, I'm just drawing sucrose. I'm too lazy to do the whole condensation reaction anymore. We're just going to cut straight to the chase. This is sucrose. Okay, and so I've got my alpha one and then my two beta linkage. Because it has a bond going up to the O. This has the bond going down to the O. It's on the one carbon. It's on the two carbon. There it is. Let me ask you something, though, before we uh, call it a day on this video. Is this alpha or beta sucrose? Or can you just not even have an alpha or beta sucrose? Think about that for a second. What do you think? I didn't say whether this was alpha or beta here, did I? I was saying that earlier. So remember, on the other sugars, we had a free linkage that could flip because we connected to the four carbon. That was that was defined. That was defined by the name. That was glucose. That means that that's going to go down. But I could have alpha or beta glucose here, and I would still have lactose, but I would have alpha or beta lactose. But in this case... I don't have the ability to play around with that anymore because this has to be beta and this has to be alpha or I don't have sucrose. And there's no way to connect to this in, in a way where it repeats. 
Like, I can't make a chain of sucroses. I can only make a single disaccharide sucrose with the same connection. I mean, I've got all these other OH groups. I could add stuff to those. But I wouldn't be able to repeat the same glycosidic linkage over and over and over again. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video is these larger, these big macromolecules are going to have repeating glycosidic linkages. It could be like 100 carbons that all have the same glycosidic, or 100 sugars, I should say, that all have the same glycosidic linkage connecting them together. And that'll be the last thing we talk about. So we're going to go, we went from individual monosaccharides, now we talked about linkages and disaccharides, and now we're going to go big. We're going to go macromolecule. We're going to go hundreds, thousands of sugars and how they're connected. But it's the same idea. So understand this naming system. And this is the trickiest one because it has an alpha and a beta on both sides of it. But understand this convention uh, and how it tells us how to put these sugars together. Because we have options. I have one, two, three, four, five OH groups I could use on this one. And I have one, two, three, four, five OH groups on this one. That means that there's 25 possible glycosidic linkages between these two sugars because I could go here to here like I did or I could go here to here I could go here to here here to here here to here and then I could go to the next one and go to the two carbon and, and carry my way through so there's 25 ways to put these together and each of them are a different disaccharide each of them have a different sugar this is the one that is sucrose if I connect any other two together I get a different sugar I get a different name and it probably isn't something that necessarily has, uh, you know, the ability to use in baking or sugar or uh, Lucky Charms. Or if you're if you're really cool, marshmallow maybes, if you know what I'm talking about. All right. So in the next video, we're going to build this up. So these ideas are going to definitely carry in the next video. So make sure that this system is making sense, this linkage system, because it tells us exactly how we're connecting them together. And that's going to be what we really lean on next when we start connecting a ton of them together. A ton of sugars together, I should say. Alright, so one more in this section, and then we'll be done with carbohydrates.